is it just me or are we not spending enough quality time together? I'm John Zidar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the second to last day of May. This is May 30th. It is Tuesday. Now, we're going to do what we always do on this show. We're going to look at some hot OTC and penny stocks. Now, remember, a penny stock is any stock under five bucks, so it doesn't matter what market they're on, which really is a good thing. I'm glad that we can trade penny stocks on the major exchanges. First off, they're free. You can get in and out of them without paying anything. But the most important thing when it comes to trading, you want volume on shares and you want volume in dollars. And we're not getting a whole lot of that on the OTC market. We haven't done this in a while, but let's see where the market is faring today. Dollar volume, it's low. $1.5 billion. Two, $2.1 billion is second gear. We need the money in the market. If you want to pull money out, the money has to come in. Share volume. Oh, we're down to 2.8 billion. I was scared at 5 billion. 10 billion, you can literally see the market hit second gear. It definitely changes. And just to give you an idea how low we are, just a little over a year ago, we were at an average of 70 billion shares a day. So we are way down. And our trades, it's like stuck, stuck in mud. We were between 250 and 300,000 shares for about six months. And then for a couple months, we fell below that down to 200,000. Now I look again and we're just right there in the same rut. So we're not getting anywhere fast and we are sinking slowly. So as I said, I am happy that there are penny stocks on the major exchanges. But that does not stop me from looking at hot charts, even if they're on the OTC market. And that's how I'm identifying the stocks we're looking at, hot charts. They've got to have something going on for them, a setup for a breakout, volume coming in, strong run for a long period of time. Then I go looking for that catalyst, some news that came out or filings. And not just today, the last couple of days, if it's been running, right? Or if it's set up, see if there was news a month ago, a filing that says something's going to happen at the end of this month. Get yourself a good position. Well, I got three of those stocks today. All have hot charts and all have reasons to move. So the first one we're going to look at is on the OTC market. This is Spectra 7 Microsystems, ticker SPVNF. She hasn't got any new news or new filings, but she's had a lot of news backing up on itself, creating momentum, and she is in a hot sector, semiconductors, microchips. So SPVNF, she finished the day at just about 67.5 cents and just a little over 12.5% gains. Now she's on the better tier of the OTC. We call it better because they have to audit their financials. Unlike the pinks, the pinks give us disclosures. They're just giving us numbers, that's it. Here, they're actually being looked at by a CPA and accounted for. So we're getting actual factual numbers. That's when fundamentals come into play. It makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. Speaking of trustworthy, they've got both those green ticks I'm always harping to you about, verified profile and a transfer agent. There's a lot of important information that's being represented by those two green ticks. So this is looking really good. And they've got independent directors, of course. You need these whenever you uplist. So when they came from the pink to the QB, which I'm presuming they did, they needed them. And if they have aspirations to go to the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ, they're going to need them then as well. And they're still sitting there. And you really don't need independent directors for a whole lot of other things but uplisting. So who knows what they have in mind. So what does Spectra 7 do? As I said, they are into semiconductor microchips. Spectra 7 Microsystems is a high performance analog semiconductor company delivering unprecedented bandwidth, speed, and resolution to enable disruptive industrial design for leading electronic manufacturers in data centers, 5G infrastructure, virtual and augmented reality, and other connectivity markets. They are based out of California. They've got a design center in Ireland and a support location in China. And this is a Canadian company. So to give you a better idea of what this company does, I'm on their website, spectra7.com. These are your everyday average wires you have behind your TV and your stereos. You know the thickness. Here's a pen. So this gives you an idea of how small these chips are. 
right there, those itty bitty tiny microchips right there. And these are made out of copper, which is a big deal. This is an innovation in chip technology, but they just don't work with chips. They work with a lot of other technologies, as they said, virtual reality, augmented reality. They've got hardware and chargers. So they're doing a lot of things. And as I said, momentum is building up right now. And I think we're looking at this at a very good time. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Nice jump. We've got over 400% increase there, don't we? Going from 35,000 to 152,000. Yeah, I know it's not a lot of volume, but we're not getting a lot of volume on the OTC. So we see more interest that we can definitely gauge. Share structure for Spectra 7, not looking up the floats because I never know if the answer I get is real anyways, why waste my time. What we've got is a good outstanding share count. That's 40 million uh, a year ago. They say the float was 28 million. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We know it's less than 39 good enough for me. Financials for Spectra 7. Whoa, look at that. Kind of impressive. 2020 to 2021, we have 500% increase going from 1 million to 5 million. It's millions. Trust me. We got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers down here. And then from 2021 to 2022, it jumped over 100% and doubled. That's a nice increase as well. Now, when we look over here at the quarterly, we do not see the one that's due right now, but it has already come out. Now it's going to compare it to last year's quarter right there, right? That is uh, March of 2022, just a little over 2 million. So jumping into the most recent financial that just came out, there you go, 2.084 million in 2022 and 3.1 million in 2023. So that is a 50% increase year over year on the quarterly. So they are growing. They keep this up, they'll be at 200% growth year over year annually. So, and things could get better and I think they're gonna get better. That's the whole point of looking at this because momentum is building up. Disclosures for the company. Uh, nothing really here to look at. All we have is the news, but that is where all their momentum is coming from, the news. As I said, they don't have any news out here directly. The last piece came out on the 24th. Spectra 7 Microsystems announces participation in the LD Micro Invitational 8. This is a place where you can show off your technology, and they're doing a lot of that. You'll see a lot of conference meetings in here. But I wanna point out that one, they are improving their product line. I can go further back and you can see they were at the 200, the 400. Now they're up here to the 800 gigabytes, I guess it is. They're doing business with more companies around the world. They've got people investing money. There's a $5.8 million investment in March. And then as we saw, their revenues are growing, which is the proof in the pudding. They had over 100% gain year over year annually, and they had 50% gain year over year quarterly. So everything looks good here. Lots of momentum going forward, including the charts. Let me share that with you. Without a doubt, we're gonna be doing our charting on Thinkorswim because it's really the only trading platform I've got. I got it for free when I signed up with TD Ameritrade and that was free too. So we are looking at SP, VNF, Spectra 7 Microsystems. That's a six month, four hour chart. I see our 200 day SMA was falling crossed over here, leveled out, and right now she is pushing up. We hit our low bubble in December of about 23 cents. She did work her way up hard and furiously up to that high bubble of $1.11, and then she fell all the way back down to about the 39 cent level right here. And it was uh, May 5th. She decided she was changing her trend. She got over a 50-day SMA, broke the 200 with some enthusiasm there, leveled off, and now she is breaking out. And right now she has tagged our very first support resistance. Now these go back either a year or three years. I grabbed something that far back so we know exactly what to work with. Algorithms never die. They're always sitting there waiting to be resurrected. Our volume, you can see that has been growing since she started climbing. It's been climbing as well. Our oscillators all look brilliant. 
Our PPO and our MACD are both going up. These are cousins to each other. You read them the same way. MACD uses the full price. Percentage price oscillator uses a percentage of the price. And our RSI is right at the overbought right now at about 69 something. Looking at our 20 day one hour view. Sweet, we got our low bubble in this corner just under 40 cents. Our high bubble was today of just under 75 cents. Hit that high bubble, has pulled back as you would when you hit your head in the ceiling. You pull back, but you're not going to get off the ladder. You're not going to come tumbling down. It just came down one step and should continue on. Our oscillators show strength, but they also show signs of that pullback right there. We have crossed the 200, we've bounced off of it once, bounced off of it twice, and we are running on top of our nine day SMA. That is a sweet position. Five day, five minute. All right, so we got our low bubble here, just underneath the 50 day. That was the only point she came under the 50 day. Bounced, got on top of her 20, and launched on that nine day escalator. Got over our support resistance, pulled back and is now bouncing off of the 20. We need to watch it, see if she's gonna respect the 20. Looks to me, well, she does. She respected the 20 here. It's a 50-50. If she doesn't stop on the 20, she will probably stop on the 50 day. That's just a guess, don't hold me to that. Technical show she is falling right now, so it's difficult to tell. However, if we back up, let's go to an hour. Nah, we're gonna have to go to four hours here. Let's just throw a regression channel on there so we have an idea. I'm gonna to go to the low bubble. We're gonna take all of this into account. And I don't even have to look doing this, folks. It lays it out for us. So believe it or not, this huge run here has been running downhill. And where are we right now? We are at the very top of that channel. Right now, breaking through that support resistance, getting outside of this channel. If she can get on top of both of these, that could be a perfect setup for an explosive run. I like SPVNF. She's got a lot going for her, including the chart setup. Now we're gonna look at a major exchange penny stock. This one comes from the NASDAQ. This is Septon Inc, ticker CPTN. Oh, Captain, my Captain. <laughs> now CPTN, it's a lot like the last stock. It hasn't got any new fresh news or filings, but she's had a lot of good news and she's in a hot sector. So there's a lot of momentum building up right now, but her chart, oh boy, Mwah. mama mia, it's to die for. It is delish. It is that perfect atypical breakout chart. You know the kind I'm talking about. With the 200 day SMA coming down like a ski slope, leveling off, with the price creeping up underneath it, getting right up under there, getting ready to jump on top and launch. And that's where we're at with this one. Looks like good timing to me. So CPTN finished today at about 44 cents and just under 6% gains. So what does Septon do? They deal with LiDAR technology. If you're not familiar with LiDAR, it's the technology that allows machines to be able to see. This is how we get self-driving cars. They're gonna have robots that can do tasks for us. They tell us that Septon is a Silicon Valley innovator of LiDAR-based solutions for automotive, smart cities, smart spaces, and smart industrial applications. With its patented LiDAR technology, Septon aims to take LiDAR mainstream. They're gonna do things we're not even thinking about with this new LiDAR, not just cars and robots, things we're just not thinking about. Septon has been awarded a significant ADAS LiDAR Series Production Award with Koshio on the General Motors business. Septon is also engaged with all top 10 global OEMs. That's a big statement right there. Now we know that the company's headquartered in San Jose, California, but they've also got a facility in Troy, Michigan, and a presence in Germany, Canada, Japan, India, and China. So they are growing globally. So what was the relative volume around the company today? We had a wee bit of a jump, not much, went from 561,000 to 689,000 but she is getting more attention. Like I said, that much we can gauge. Share structure for CPTN, only information we have is the outstanding share count at 156 million. We know the floats under that. Financials for my captain. 
All right, she is increasing over the last two years, which is the only time she's had money, going from 4.5 million to 7.4 million. Looking at her quarterly, 2.5, 1.8, she's falling. Yeah, they have been falling little by little, and she just gave us her most recent financial. So things could use some improving here. Looking at the captain's financials, the captains had revenues for the last two years. They've grown about 70% from 2021, 4.5 million to 7.4 million. That's not bad. Looking at our quarterlies, that's not good. This goes right up to the most recent one, March, that they just came out with. They've been falling every single quarter, just a little bit, but they have been falling. So they need to tweak this. And I'm a little surprised because LIDAR is big technology. It is going into a lot of different sectors and being used. So maybe it is a microchip semiconductor problem. Maybe this company needs to get with the first company we were talking about, Spectra 7. How about disclosures for the company? Oh, we've got lots of Form 4s here. Form 4s can be good or bad. These are filings that the insiders must file whenever they acquire or dispose of shares of the company. This could be purchases and sales, but it could be something else too. You never know till you look. So let's look at the bottom, the top, and one in the middle, just so we get a feel for what's going on here. So we got George, who's a director. He has acquired, that's the A here, 100,000 shares, but he didn't pay for them. Look at that price, zero. How do you get free shares? Well, just come on down to the bottom over here, explanations. You can normally see a footnote here, and it says here that the issuer awarded the reporting person 100,000 time-based restricted stock units, which represents contingent rights to receive one share. That's why he got his, but he didn't pay for it. Let's take one here in the middle. All right, this is Q Ming. They are an officer and they sold 5,000 shares at 37 cents. So what did that get them? Like $1,500. So it wasn't a big sale and they have got uh, 287,000 shares. So they could have sold a lot more, right? Let's take a look at the very top one. Ooh, this is the CEO and the president, Mr. Pei Jun. Mr. June sold himself 40,000 shares at 37 cents. That's roughly $17,000. Now, look how many shares he's got. He has got himself, oh, total number of shares, 2.5 million. Is that one, two, three, or is that 25 million? And up here, 1.5 million. My point, he only sold 40,000 shares for $17,000. That's not a huge profit margin. He could have had to pay rent or he had back taxes or his kids needed braces. You never know. This inflationary period is hitting everybody. Anything else there we need to see? Well, let's take a look at this 8K. Since it's the most current one we got here, they got a stockholder meeting coming up. So that pretty much covers us on all of that. Let's take a look at that news. Now, we're not going to jump into any of this, but I want you to see what is going on, especially the most current piece of news we've got. This goes back to April. Septon unveils Ultra Slim Vista X90 Plus LiDAR, expanding industry leadership for windshield integration. This is neat. Then in April, they also had another piece. They expand their proprietary chipset for automotive LiDAR with new advanced point cloud processor, ASIC. No, I don't understand what I'm reading, but it sounds good, right? They're advancing their technologies. Septon LiDAR deployed in government-funded pedestrian safety projects in Texas and Utah. So now they're working with state governments. And this is the one that caught my attention. Septon integrates award-winning adaptive LiDAR model into NVIDIA's Omniverse. NVIDIA is just hitting it hard right now, folks. NVIDIA is getting a lot of attention. And if you are partnering with companies like that, chances are you're going to get some good tailwinds as well, right? So I see the company's revenues have fallen a little, but they are in a technology, a sector that we're going to be using more and more and more, not just in cars, but industrial equipment, you know, all these sort of uh, rail cars or forklifts, anything like that, not to mention robots. They are just around the corner.
So let's go take a look at this chart because I really like the way she's set up. I know it's itty bitty, but trust me, that's a hot setup. It is sizzling. This is CPTN Septin Inc. And that is a six month, four hour view. Our high bubble of $2.88 hit at the end of October when she immediately started the fall. She came under the 200 and only tried to break out once in February, fell down here to 41 cents, but that wasn't the end of her fall. She then found a new low of 31 cents right there. She just hung around the 50 day SMA, biding time, waiting for this 200 day SMA to get close enough. There was no way it had the strength to start climbing on its own, jump up on top of there and hold her footing and not slide down that big hill. So she just waited until it got close. And look, when did she decide to get on top? When it went flat. You can see right there, she gave one poke. That was her indicator, I want to climb. She came back down, landed on her nine day SMA, started riding that escalator up. It is flat now, she has broke through, she is up here. Everything looked great. Our volume is increasing and our oscillators are looking awesome. Our PPO and our MACD are pushing up, looking great. We've got a spread on our PPO and our ADX. Now the ADX is my trend continuation. It's a real simple oscillator. When the direction of the line changes, your trend changes. So as long as this line keeps going down, that means my price is going up right now. Now that's a pattern. If you see the PPO blue line going up and you see this red line going down and they're spreading, getting further and further apart, guaranteed 100% your price is rising. So those oscillators look great. And our RSI has been pushing up from 42 up to 65 right now. Everything looks good on the four hour chart. 20 day, one hour view. So we got our low bubble back here of 33 cents. She shot through that 200 with a lot of velocity, hit a high bubble of 45 cents, fell hard like a rubber ball, went underwater, came back up, blug, 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 and then she decided to stay up here. She struggled a few days ago and now she's off and running again. She's gotten on top of her 200 and on top of all of her SMAs and she's floating on her nine day SMA. And all of her SMAs are in perfect place. There's your nine, your 20, your 50 and your 200, looking good. Oscillators are still very strong. PPO and MACD are still pushing up and our RSI is holding steady at 63. Five day, five minute. Oh, look at that 200. She was coming down and she has swung up and she's been climbing for the last three days. We had a low bubble back here in this corner of 35 cents. Hit a high today of 44 cents. She did pull back, but she didn't come all the way to the 200. She's landed on that 50. She's graduated from the 200 bounce to the 50 day bounce. So this is looking pretty good. She did have a hard drop right there. Boy, look at all the technicals. Hit hard and they are bouncing right now. I like CPTN. I think LiDAR is a hot technology. Revenues could be better. Maybe they're gonna get better, but the chart's hot right now. Even a little catalyst can get this thing moving. Last stock we're looking at, another penny stock from the OTC. This is ticker CNNA, Can American Core. I found her by recognizing a hot chart. This one was easy. <laughs> she launched April 28th and has not looked back since. She is flying to the moon. And when I came over here trying to find the catalyst, trying to correlate filings and news presses with the bounces on the chart, I couldn't do it. Not because it hasn't got any news or filings, it does. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. There's a lot of hot news. The company has made four acquisitions in the past few months and they have absolutely nothing to do with cannabis. Everybody thinks of Can American as a cannabis company, which is easy to do with a name like that. Fact of the matter is they're a holdings company. And one of the first companies they purchased was a cannabis company. So that's why everybody thinks they're just cannabis. But these new acquisitions have nothing to do with cannabis. They're in completely different sectors. So CNNA, she finished today at a brilliant buy price, 0.011 with just a little over 12% gains. Oh God, do I love buying on the ones. Think about it. You buy on the one, soon as it hits the very next digit, two, you've doubled your money. 
100% gains, just that quick. Hit three, that's 200% gains. Triple your money, and it goes on and on. If you know your stock is going to rise, you have a strong inclination, buying on the one can be a lot of fun. She is on the pink limited tier. This is a drawback for the company. It's a serious situation if they don't get it rectified. This means they are late on one or more of their financials. And we'll get more information on that as we go along. I do see they've got a transfer agent verified, but we don't have a verified profile, and I would like to see that. But since I wouldn't be playing this for a long hold, and that's what it would be, a play, a short swing or a day trade, I'm really not too worried about that verified profile. So I've told you what the company is up to. What is her relative volume? <laughs> For not having news that has come out today or yesterday, it's just news building up. There's a lot of interest in this company. She went from roughly 30 million shares to almost 90 million shares, almost tripling her normal volume. That's not bad at all. Share structure for CNNA. Outstanding share count, just a little over 400 million. They give us lots of numbers down here. 127 million uh, about two years ago. 262 million at the DTC. This is actually a transient place. That's kind of a pipeline right there. So I really don't count on that. And 395 unrestricted, which is what I always think of as the float. And that is right up underneath that 400 million. So I'm presuming you got a pretty high float here. Financials for CNNA. We got nothing on the annual and we got nothing on the quarterly. We've got to take a look at that balance sheet. We've got to see what's going on here since we have no revenues. Total assets, not much, $170,000. Total liabilities down here, 7.5 million. So they're a little top heavy right now with debt. They definitely need to get that taken care of. But I'm thinking with all of these deals they just made, they're gonna have multiple revenue streams. I think things are gonna change here in a big hurry. Okay, let's see, we've got an 8K here that came out about a week ago. Let's just poke our head into this and see what this is about. Oh, this is about one of the deals that they just made. So we can get that information from the news. So we are looking at news old and new. Not real old, but you need to be aware of it. This goes back to October of last year. This one is November of last year. Then we've got one here for March and then May. And I want to jump into all four of these real quick and show you the deals that they're making. This first one came out October 26th. Can American will acquire 80 million common shares of Mark II Media Group, constituting 80% majority ownership. Mark II Media Group is a technology company with a vision to develop and distribute applications globally under a unique business model that eliminates heavy end user costs. Mark II is registered with Google Play, Apple Store, Steam, and Oculus. The next news press, that came out November of 2022. Can American will acquire 75 million common shares of Valkyrie Systems, constituting 75% majority ownership. Currently, Valkyrie Systems is in the final stages of deploying its Valkyrie One military virtual reality simulator. Valkyrie intends to pitch the Valkyrie One system to the Department of Defense as a replacement to a now outdated military training software currently still being utilized. Ooh, what I tell you, nothing to do with cannabis. This one came out March 27th. On March 1st, 2023, the company completed the acquisition of Prodigy Stem Cell. Based on publicly available research reports, the global stem cell market is currently valued at approximately $12 billion, with projections to reach approximately $30 billion by 2030. Not too far away. Prodigy expects its business model to capture a significant U.S. market share over the next several years, with exclusive laboratory access to the highest quality stem cells in the market. Prodigy is initiating a multi-pronged business plan. And that last news press, this one just came out about a week ago, May 24th. 
They tell us here that on May 10th, the company completed the acquisition of Liberty Health Plus. They've changed the name to Prodigy Health Plus. Prodigy Health Plus is the nation's first free pharmacy by providing 605 of the most prescribed generic medications for free through its membership plan. Prescriptions are accepted by 64,000 pharmacies nationwide, including Walgreens, CVS Pharmacy, Walmart Pharmacy, Rite Aid, and Albertsons. Similar to a gym membership, once enrolled, customers get access to all of Liberty Health Plus's RX medications for free. The company expects the new Prodigy Health Plus website to launch within the next 10 days. And this came out on the 24th of May, so by June 4th, this site should be up and you should be able to get yourself a membership. Definitely worth looking into. So you can see they've got lots of different businesses, one working with media, one working with stem cells, one working with prescription drugs, and one working with cannabis. Whoa, they got a lot to juggle and a lot of revenue streams that are going to be coming in now. And I think it's going to help the charts, though the charts don't need a lot of help. I've got some fond memories of this chart. We've been here before. This is sticker CNNA, Can American, six month, four hour view. This blue line tells me when we were here. That was October 20th. The price when we looked at it was roughly two and a half cents. The very next day she hit almost 10 cents. You're looking at three, maybe 400% run there. Then she came down, bounced off for 20 firmly, and jumped up here to 1.3 cents. Now you're looking at over 500% gains. Then she came back down and made another strong run to a penny and a half. You're looking at seven to 800% gains before she came barreling all the way back down to double zero one, almost a 1500% drop. And she did that at the end of uh, February. Now, she started falling. Looks like she got real close, real close to her low right here. But it was right there, April 27th, 28th. She got on top of her 50-day SMA, and she started to push up. Got up over her 200-day SMA, and she launched onto her 9-day. And she's been pushing up, and she's hit her very first resistance that we pulled back of a high back six months ago. Volume. It is growing right now, folks, as is all of our oscillators. Every single one of them is pushing up and red hot. This is looking very good on a four-hour chart. 20-day, one-hour view. Here's our low bubble at double zero one four, slowly inching her way up over that bottom support, bouncing off of it, getting on top of her 50, launching, skipping the 20, getting directly on that nine-day SMA, she got up here, hit a high when she broke this resistance, came back down, only down to the nine, did not go any deeper. She's had some red bars, but she is sitting firmly on that nine day SMA, even after market hours. Oscillators still have a lot of strength in them, but you can see she is now starting to go sideways, so they are starting to cool off a little bit. Five day, five minute look. Gotta like that. Low bubble in this corner. Double zero three one. Woo! High bubble today of 0 0.012. Think of this as going from three to 12. That is a 400% run right there, folks, in the last five days. She came back down, hit the 50, went under it like a rubber ball, came back on top, and now she's fighting on her nine again to start climbing. Oscillators, well, they look like they took a beating. Everything was coming down. They've all bounced and are starting to climb again. I think it's worth a watch myself. I think the chart is hot. Yeah, it's already up in the air, but it doesn't look like it's slowing down. They've made a lot of acquisitions. They could have any sort of news press come out to tell us more about those acquisitions. And who knows what else they have up their sleeves. Do some more due diligence. I like CNNA. Forget that she's a cannabis company. That's just a bonus. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think all three of those charts look good. And I like all three stocks. That's a good pairing. Every single stock has got a reason to move. Spectra 7, hot sector, semiconductor, microchips here in North America. 
Then you got Captain LiDAR technology. It's also booming right now. And they got lots of companies they're working with, including NVIDIA. And then you've got CNNA. They're doing all sorts of things right now. Lots of acquisitions and all the charts are ready to run. It's up to you folks. Put them on your watch list. Do some more due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.